diagnostic devices. Essentially, we deal with devices that use light, whether it be ultraviolet, visible, or infrared, optical radiation, to provide information about tissue. So over the past 10 years, there's been a real increase in the number of these devices that have been submitted um, to FDA. So we have to, uh, as a laboratory, do a, a number of, of things. The three main things that we're really focused on is understanding the fundamental basis of these devices, the working mechanisms, how the light interacts with the tissue. Um, two, we've recently gotten into developing um, bench test methods for these devices so they can be compared to one another relatively easily, uh, which facilitates the regulatory process. And also uh, performing uh, research on safety of these devices because uh, any optical radiation emitting device has a potential to produce a damage either by photothermal mechanisms or uh, if you're talking about ultraviolet radiation, uh, there's potential for uh, other forms of damage. I should mention that um, probably the most ubiquitous form of uh, optical diagnostic device is the pulse oximeter, which you may have seen in hospitals, which essentially a little clip thing that goes on your finger has a red light, and it essentially uses the uh, absorption characteristics of, of uh, hemoglobin, deoxy and oxyhemoglobin, and the differences in these uh, absorption spectra, the absorption as a function of wavelength, uh, to provide information about the oxygenation of the tissue. So this fundamental idea of uh, changes in the optical properties as a function of wavelength can be used for a variety of other applications. And one of the areas that we're seeing a lot in uh, recent years involves uh, the use of light to provide um, uh, early cancer diagnosis for uh, mucosal tissues such as the lungs, uh, the GI system such as the colon, uh, uh, cervical cancer, and, uh, and others. So uh, 